got my shoulder pads on, so that means we about to get serious. Hey everyone, what's up? What's good? Welcome to my kind of vlog miss 2021. If you know, I have been actively kind of on the job market, hunting for a new a good position i'm being very picky y'all let me just say that i have the option to be picky right now i've been looking for the right position for me for months now oh as a network engineer there are some skills that i have been seeing that companies have been wanting there are some skills that i have seen that other people have been trying to learn to kind of keep up with the new technologies and i wanted to share that with y'all with y'all kind of my opinion on them at the same time. Also with these skills, as a networking individual, your foundation, your core competencies in networking will still need to be used no matter which of these skills, these platforms, these vendors, it doesn't matter which one you want to learn, you're gonna learn, it doesn't matter, you're gonna need it. Okay, you're gonna need it. So I don't really care. Oh, networking is dead. Is networking moving because of the cloud, because of automation, because of mother? Do you know, networking ain't going nowhere. But that's it, I'm done. Let's get into these dang skills, all right? Let's just get into it. First thing I have ran into that people, that I have seen that people want experience in, in experiencing and experience with they're looking for experience and even currently in my position we're looking to hire a networking another networking person but we're looking to hire somebody with sd wan experience now there are a lot of companies that are have already transitioned to an sd wan environment or are strongly interested in it i had just interviewed with a company that they were moving uh, in the process of moving and migrating to an SD-WAN type of environment. SD-WAN, Software Defined Wide Area Network. The top SD-WAN vendors that I saw that's most popular, I ran into so, so, so many. Like VMware's, VMware's SD-WAN Bello Cloud has been so popular. I have, and that see, people seem to be like in Velo Cloud. Um, the position that I applied for, they were moving with Fortinet's SD WAN solution. I currently work for Silver Peak um, SD WAN solution. There's like Citrix, Six, Citrix, Oracle. There, there's other SD WAN vendors out there, but it is good to at least know it. Now, here's the thing with SD WAN. Just because you're manager, uh, managing and you know, and you have all this stuff in this nice little software, your network is boom right there. This is the first position that I have ever worked with SD-WAN and every single skill that I have had when working with multiple sites, when we just had just a regular WAN, multiple sites everywhere, um, the same exact troubleshooting that I do with that is the same exact troubleshooting that I do with SD-WAN. And this is what I mean when I say your foundational networking skills will not go away and you need them. Two, oof, automation, okay? Programming, automation, scripting, it doesn't, man, that thing has been, has been just blowing up. A lot of companies want to automate their processes, especially when it comes to networking. I mean, what's the new, the Cisco DevOps um, certification path that they have now. It is huge to learn programming. As someone who has <laughs> always been against programming and never liked it, I feel like I'm at it, like just stuck. And I'm at, to the point where it's like, damn, <laughs> I guess I gotta learn some type of language because the automation standpoint of things when it comes to software development, network automation, I'm still kind of learning what the true difference is between the two. I feel like you I feel like network automation is there's like a a gray area on is it really networking or is it more software development? You know, I, I don't really know if I'm explaining that right. I'm not very good at that. But uh, it's mm, 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 mm. 
but things that you know you, you need to know you got python ansible bash you know oh obviously linux you know that we don't get to that because that's going to be one stuff like that that these companies are looking for experience with but if you're a holdout like me when it comes to not learning programming we struggling we struggling firewalls network security any of that those skills mm. please 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 i feel as though they kind of go hand in hand with one another mm. but you need to learn it seriously security is huge it is so important it's gotten more important with all the stuff that's been happening these days it's gotten more and more important to learn firewall security anything like that those skills will take you far and they can pay baby they can pay the on my job search i have seen companies wanting fortinet okay fortinet is a beast if you have the opportunity, and this is just me, and this is, I don't work for Fortinet, this ain't me, whatever. I'm just telling you, if you have the opportunity to work with Fortinet, learn Fortinet, anything that has to do with their platforms. Now keep in mind, they got firewalls, switches, they are SD-WAN. They, they got the whole capability for you to have a homogenous network. I'm not saying that that's what you should, but if that's what you want to do, you could do it. Um, and they are a powerhouse and they are running it up compared to any other vendor. But Fortinet, obviously Palo Alto's, um, Checkpoint, Sophos, what's the other one I've ran into? Juniper. Um, and more recently with government positions, what I've seen talking to other people that I know that are still with the military and government positions, they are starting to learn and work not with Palos, but with Force Point. So keep that in mind. What's the other thing? Cloud. <laughs> learn some type of cloud. And I, this is my opinion, let me say. I say majority of the companies that are out there, they ha use some form of the cloud i think typically more for storage but are they actually utilizing the cloud fully mm, no i think majority of the companies are still on, on premise hardware networking and that typically my experience from running into it has been just because of cost um but more and more companies may not be fully 100% moving into the cloud, but they do have a hybrid cloud network, okay? And when you're looking for jobs, you're gonna say they need help with, with moving into a hybrid solution, uh, migrating from on-prem to cloud, uh, anything like that. There are so many jobs out there that have it. And Azure, it's usually Azure. I think I run in some more wanting AWS over Azure, but knowing both, it can't hurt you. But in my opinion, AWS seems to be a little bit, more people seem to be using. I currently use Azure. We are not in a complete hybrid cloud uh, setup, but trying to move into it. Um, so I'm getting into that skills and setting that up and learning more about that but hey take it for what it is i think those are the most important like core bam in your face and then there's also other skills that i think you need to learn to be successful if you don't know them you don't learn you, if you haven't learned them if you don't have them you need to get them okay researching you need to learn how to research google ask a peer go into forums anything that you can imagine research because i guarantee you will not stop researching anything <laughs> do you know how many times i've been asked say hey, we want to do this can we do it do it or do it just do it and you're just like uh-huh yeah let me let me figure that out you gotta go down the rabbit hole of researching number one seeing if you can do it seeing if the cost if it's cost effective what it's gonna take to do it maybe you need to buy some new equipment it doesn't matter the time frame and practice you gotta set up your lab environment run it there see if it can work research man research also even though we i am personally past a certain point you're kind of i would say more back end you're not really customer facing all the time but you are okay at the at the same time there is still going to be times when you need to talk to people customer service all right please learn how to talk to people be respectful 
all right once you reach a certain level i know it can get kind of hard <laughs> but you need to have that skill for talking to people and the number one skill and this isn't more so soft skills but it is a skill that you get better with over time it is not something that you automatically know how to do in the beginning in, in any type of job i feel but in, in networking specific troubleshooting troubleshooting is a skill and if you are a good troubleshooter you will get far when i first started yo i sucked <laughs> and there are some people who struggle with troubleshooting but if you struggle with troubleshooting please work on building that skill and every time i get stuck or once you get comfortable with troubleshooting you start skipping steps Oh, I've seen this before. I know that this is the thing. I know that this is the And then when you think it's what it was before, or I've seen this before, and this is what I did to fix it, and then it doesn't fix it, or if it ends up breaking it more, then you end up always going back to the basics. I, If I'm stuck, or if I screw up with a troubleshooting, or I don't know what to do, there is nothing wrong with backing up to the basics of the basics of the OSI model, okay? The o, following the OSI model has saved my butt more often than not when it comes to learning troubleshooting. If you follow that OSI model, it will help you build that troubleshooting skill. So, like that OSI model, physical to application, them steps, them steps. And granted, it used to be that as a networking engineer or in the networking field, Typically, you will stay between the first four layers, layer one through four, um, and then anything after that, it was just kind of whatever, you know, session, presentation, application. Um, you're kind of reaching into the realms of like, oh, mm, that ain't me, I don't wanna do it. These days, I don't believe that is the case anymore, just based off of technology, where we are going. We are slowly moving up into layer five, six, seven, okay? like. It's like you're using all of it now. And still, troubleshooting, man. Troubleshooting. Just just do it. I want to add an honorable mention. And it is Linux. Everyone in networking should, you don't need to be an expert with the OS, with Linux, or anything, but know something about it. I am not proficient in Linux by any means, but I know just enough to do troubleshooting when I need to. Um, other uh, devices that are Linux based, Linux CLI, and is Linux CLI, like using that is easier than going through the GUI or anything. <laughs> it just works so much better when you need to troubleshoot because so many platforms equipment softwares on the back end run off linux unix it, 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 but they run off the the nix <laughs> and knowing that will improve you as a network engineer when it comes to troubleshooting there's another honorable mention and i forgot to put this on my list but i'm gonna put it because i've been seeing more of it oh i've been seeing more of this now this is just a hey i'm gonna put this out there i'm not because i don't know too too much about it but i'm gonna just tell you what i've seen what i've heard potentially maybe you might be interested in but kubernetes that's all i'm gonna say but that's it that's all I got to say. If you have any other skills that you've ran into, this is stuff that I have ran into. Let me just say, this is what I, I see people asking for. This is what's the, what's the hot topic right now. This is free, free round for discussions. Help out anybody. Again, this is my opinion. My opinion. Stay tuned for the next video. Woo!